Okay, Mongoose Jake here with what is now my modded Tetra shot. Now, I wanted to get this done right after my internals guide video because I wanted to, my internals and mod potential video that I've been calling them lately, because I wanted to get a chance to get this done first. Because I have a special part that I made for it and I wanted to try it out and see if it worked. So, this is now a true shotgun. It does need fine tuning. It does need improvement. This is just the starting point. It also needs a good paint job. But I I actually have a shotgun now. It does work. So now this is my shotgun and let me show you how this works. Close it up. As you can see I only have a few loaded, but it'll give a good demonstration of it of it actually advancing. It advance after every prime. And yes, it fires a burst of darts. That time it fired three out of four, which seems to be the case most of the time. So how did I do it? And just, we'll show you. And as you can see, zero issues. Now I'm gonna D prime. So, Going back to my internals video, I showed how this how this works. And quite simply, like I had said I would do, if if you haven't watched that video, please go do so. And then this will all make very good sense. I have installed one of my parts. I made two of them. I've installed one of my two rotational parts. This is the Tetra Shot. This is the Tetra Shot shotgun rotational part. Now, what this does is when this is installed, it actually catches the belt advance on every single prime. And it's installed with a little bit of epoxy and then the two screws that I had said I was going to use. They're shoulder type screws, which actually you happen to get a couple of them coming out of where this little... Uh, trigger catches. It doesn't have the traditional locks that the Busby blasters normally do. It just has this little uh, trigger lock. Once you pull that out, it actually gives you a couple of little shoulder screws. Make sure you pre-drill the holes if you were to try to mimic my design here, which if you do, please just, you know, give me credit. That's only, only the right thing to do. But that little thing is the key. Almost kind of looks like a key. But installing that in place of the spring-loaded ro rotational mechanism that's normally in there because this actually moves to rotate and yes I'm going to open up the blaster here in a second and show you guys this but this of course rotates the plunger tube and then when it hits that ramp that I showed in my internals video this gets pushed down and then catches the advancement mechanism well by installing this this doesn't stick up and have it's this actually is sized to eliminate this part right there it's i've made these just short enough and they also stick out just as far enough as this does when it's extended i'll show you that here in profile see this has it at when this would be extended because that's that's all it moves this only moves down that far so basically this has replaced this when it's at full extension and by providing all that extra support it gives it i believe what will be extreme long-term durability i mean this part will outlast the rest of the blaster at this point so let's take a look inside and show you what it looks like okay let's take a look at what i've done and then I'm going to make comments on how I would improve this mod. Because right now it does shotgun. And it does so with reasonable range. I can't showcase it right now due to the rain outside. Because I'm not putting my camera in that. But it's usable enough for close quarters. But it could be made significantly better with a few changes. And I'm going to make these in time. However, I quite simply wanted to show you guys this. Even if this is, uh, we'll say... Tetra, Tetra Shot Shotgun Mark 1. 
Now, one big thing that I'm going to just say offhand is I'm only using a 7 kilogram spring. You guys know I've got a ton of them on hand. I use them in a lot of my builds. And it provides, the reason for that is it provides a long term mod, not the greatest power. And that was, that was going to be one thing I mentioned. This priming rod looks like it can handle significantly more. I, I shouldn't say significantly, but it could definitely do 8, 9, maybe 10 kilograms. You know, that, that would definitely boost this. Like, for instance, the uh, you know normal kilogram of spring for a sledge fire, you know, is around 12, 13 kilograms. So this is significantly weaker spring-wise. So... That would explain why, you know, I get like 20 feet, 25 feet-ish with the few darts that come out. Because it normally normally fires two or three out of the four. Not a big deal. It does work. But could certainly be improved. Now, I gutted the front of this here. And what I believe I need to do is I need to brass this. I need to brass each respective chamber. Now... I had to do that to at least get some performance, you know, going right now. And I'll go ahead and remove this. But a 7 kilogram retaliator spring fits just fine. It fits over the the uh, reinforcements here at the front. And I was able to, I had to thread it on to get it past this little piece here. But it worked. It fits. It primes. So a retaliator spring is definitely the one to use. They're also everywhere. I eliminated a lot of dead space. There was a huge amount of dead space with a fill-in with hot glue. Make sure you clean it with, I clean it with alcohol, and then filled it, let it cure, and then you're able to go ahead and get rid of all the dead space in the front of that, which the entire interior of that plunger head was dead space. Now, it's also something I'm going to mention. I gutted the front of the plunger tube. So now, you know, it'll pass through full air. Not necessarily the most efficient thing to do. Because, on top of that, you also have to gut the front end of this. And now if you think, from roughly here to here is all dead space. Again, dead space is a loss of efficiency. Something that could be done via 3D printing. How about this? How about just make this thing? And there's also a seal there. There's a foam seal, which could be losing a little air. So dead space plus maybe extra air loss. Not the greatest thing ever. This needs to be 3D printed. This whole unit. Like 3D print the whole unit. And since you're not going to have to use the rotational mechanism, nobody has to model these. You don't even have to model the ramps in unless you're going to do that for reinforcement. And then maybe, just maybe, 3D print a larger cylinder that still drops into the the shell, but then sleeve it with aluminum. Or, you know, even, you know, polycarbonate. But make it still be, you know, to where if you want to, I mean, at that point then, you could even enlarge and, and redo the plunger head, plunger rod, everything. I think there's a huge potential here. I mean, monstrous potential even, because there's a lot of room in the shell here. A lot of room. And I mean, heck, we could even, you know, cut out the cut out the shell and yeah here here i go giving away my mark ii upgrades i'm gonna put some little led lights in there i that's, i want to put some led lights in here and you know maybe even uh down the barrel that'd be that'd just be cool this is my mark one this is going to be an ongoing thing so i don't mind sharing a little bit of my future plans here but I think a 3D printed replacement that does away with all of this makes it a one unit with a lot less dead space and then a revised plunger and plunger head, plunger rod, plunger head all together that had more draw. See, this is stopping here. And then it's dead space after that. Why not use that extra inch to produce more draw? Why not use that to, you know, redo this front piece to where it's far more efficient delivery of the air that it, it produces. And then, of course, you know, you could even, if you're not using all of that, I mean, here's what it looks like inside the shell now. There's room here. 
to expand the plunger tube in diameter. Because without the mechanisms to rotate, you don't need you know, to worry about this volume that Busby had to worry about when they were producing the blaster for its functionality to get the 48 shots at single fire mode. And of course, as you can see, there is my piece installed. I, and that is my design. I actually, actually quite like that. That would be, I wouldn't change anything about that design. That design looks like it's gonna work quite well. So that is something I would leave alone. You know, again, if you're going to go into 3D printing, you can do a lot of work to improve a lot of things. I think my design there worked quite well. Okay, now I actually want to show this thing operating. You know, sands the uh, plunger rod and spring so that I can easily manipulate this by hand. Now, of course, you prime back and it engages the catch. So you're, you're primed and ready to fire. You move forward. Normally, you have to wait every four shots. However, with my piece installed, it catches the advancement mechanism and readies up the next, we'll say, belt pod for, of your four darts. Well, now, pull the trigger. Pull the trigger, catch releases. Plunger tube slams, or the plunger rod slams home, fires the darts, and then you repeat the process. And again. And because that is a metal part, epoxied in place and screwed in place, which I'm going to show you here right now, you just take this one screw here apart, which that doesn't actually really have any uh, stress on it, this one small screw. But I put shouldered, shouldered screws in here, and I also packed epoxy in around the screws themselves, and this one shouldered screw is actually over the plastic of this section of the priming bar because it is a two-part priming bar actually three part there is also a uh, pair of screws here so it's actually one piece two pieces three pieces and then to put it back together you just simply set it in place back in the track and then tighten up this screw here which again because this is pushing backwards there really is no stress on that little screw however this is hollow here you could always reinforce that if you want to but again the piece does work exactly as i intended it to and that is just simply in place like so i'm going to try to lay that over so that you could see what it would look like this piece of polished 1 8 inch thick steel fits down in there screwed in place from the backside, packed with epoxy to even give it even more holding strength, and then you put this plate back over it. That's the key to the whole mechanism. But, as is now, I'm getting roughly 20 foot-ish ranges when I was using it before the rain, and here in the workshop, I can get it to clear the whole workshop. So, that's effective. You know, I mean, that would certainly work in, indoors. Now, improvements, again, I've touched on it. This is not efficient. There is a lot of dead space from here forward. That's all dead space. The fact is, is that as it is, I'm going to try and put in brass in here to help eliminate dead space. That'll still leave it individualized. And that's always going to lead to when you have a shotgun that, uh, blaster that has individualized chambers, it's going to fire off whatever dart has the least resistance. Because just like water takes the path of least resistance, so does air. So if you have four darts in here, as you can see, my demonstration burst, it fired three of four, and that's been normal. But let's say two have really good seals, so brand new darts. But other two are a little bit worn it'll do that so now it's up to i think this thing has enough potential there's enough i think there'll be enough people who like it that need somebody who is more into 3d printing and designing than i am i can machine metal that's something i can do but to replace this kind of mocked up thing that i've got going i mean my mark ii will be to paint this shell and I'm going to brass these. 
to try to eliminate dead space. And I'm gonna I'm gonna epoxy these together. Right now, this is just kind of put together quickly and hastily. So we're gonna I'm gonna epoxy that and actually put brass down in. I will stop the brass slightly short to allow you know interchange of air at least a little bit. But the Tetra shot shotgun. I'm going to nickname it the Tetra SG. That'll be my my name for it. It is functional. 20 foot ranges, maybe 25 if I'm being really generous, but I would say 20 foot on a 7 kilogram spring with a severe lack of efficiency in my mod. And I mean that's just me admitting the faults of this. A, a modder who's worth anything will look at their own mod and say, hey, how could I improve this? And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to do that openly so that you guys know what I'm thinking ahead of time. But let's see if we can't get this done. I need somebody who can work with 3D printing and make a more efficient plunger tube setup, maybe even expand it. There's room, as you can see with my part here. There's, and that, that again, I'm not going to lay claims to it. It's not going to be like a, I mean, again, if somebody copies me directly, I mean, if you see somebody running this little hatchet or key style piece, I mean, it's obvious where they got the idea, <laughs> but you know, if you do want to copy me, go ahead. Just uh, give me credit where credit's due, please. But I would like to see a sharing of ideas, somebody using this because it opens up so much more room, put a bigger plunger tube, even if you just expanded it here within this part of the shell, because this part of the shell has a lot of room now. There could be a big plunger tube put in there. And then we could go and say, I'm actually gonna dig out my ruler here. I mean, as it is now, that plunger tube is roughly three centimeters. And you could easily do four and a half, maybe even five. We'll say four, four to four and a half centimeter in diameter in this section with no problems, which that would be just counting that at that length. We're looking at, it's from that ring to the back, we're looking at 84 millimeters. So if you could do a, if you do 40, by we'll say and then from that shell brace to that one that's seven centimeters so if you could do a 40 by seven that'd be 40 millimeters by 70 centimeters on the external diameter i mean that would be decent sized plunger tube good air volume and then tighten up the efficiency up here or stick with this you know the same diameter all the way and then make one that has the draw that you can actually use from here all the way to here, which that would give you, I mean, I'm just gonna stop short here. We're looking at, that's 11 centimeters of usable space. And if you stay with the stock, that's 11, that's 110 lengthwise by 30 diameter. Again, that's a, that's a good one to plug into a volume calculation. So you could do a, modified one here of 40 by 70 or 110 by 30 and use this and just use a lengthened plunger rod hey there's mark two or mark three of my tetra shotgun i'll have to i'll have to team up with somebody to do that though but here it is as it is functioning and if i just throw this back together off camera i can get to using it it's probably went a little long but that's me. But the Tetra shot absolutely can be made into a shotgun. All you have to do, eliminate this part. This is the indexer and rotator. Get rid of one trigger lock. And make the Tetra shot shotgun key. As I have. I have machined a couple. So that... That's my own personal design, but it also does, it really does look like a little hatchet. <laughs> but I'm going to wrap it up here. Hope this is useful. Hope this is a, uh, you know, entertaining video, but especially hopefully it's 
useful for anybody who is looking to get this blaster and see if they can't mod it to become a shotgun, as it rightfully should be. But, Smuggers Jake saying thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this.